The trailer for the new Empire looks breathtakingly refreshing, with some new monsters like the Scar King and the Baby Kong. Well, he's not a monster, really. It looks like an innocent giant. Nevertheless, the trailer also featured some other monsters like the Leaf Wings, the Fox Titans, and a whole colony of new Kongs. So, in this video, we will explore all the monsters that appeared in the Godzilla x Kong The New Empire trailer. Without any further ado, let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Scar King, the new Kong villain. In Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, the Monsterverse is steering up a storm with the introduction of a new titan, the Scar King. This colossal beast is presumably ruling Hollow Earth with an iron fist and is so powerful that even Kong needs Godzilla's help to tackle him. The Scar King, an orangutan-based giant with his elongated physique, lengthy arms, and thick reddish fur seems deadlier than the Mecha Godzilla we saw in the last movie. His eyes glow a soft, luminous blue, and he sports bright red war paint. Fans who've been digging deep into the monster burst might remember the Scar King from mentions in previous movies and expanded lore in series like Unnatural World. This ancient titan, who used Hollow Earth's energy to mimic his enemy's powers, was once trapped there by Godzilla. But now, as hinted in the new trailer and poster, the Scar Scar King is ready to resurface and shake things up. The trailer teases that the Scar King might be the ruler of the Kongs in the Hollow Earth, which goes on to suggest that he overthrew them to seize control. He's shown sitting on a throne, the trailer also hints at a potential grudge against humans, which will escalate the conflict beyond just monster battles. Furthermore, we know from the trailer that humans do inhabit the Hollow Earth, presumably a tribe of the Iwi people from Skull Island. Scar King's sheer size and strength has also spotlighted in the trailer his dominance in Hollow Earth. Earth implies he might have an army of Kongs which would set the stage for an epic showdown. Maybe Kong would manage to get these guys to his side by showing who the real boss is, just as it happens in the case of real-world gorillas. Scar King is out of Toho products, so we do not know much about him. What we do know a few things about our next entry. Leafwing. In the Monsterverse, Leafwing's a less aggressive cousin of the Psycho Vultures have been flapping around since the 70s. These creatures, smaller than their relatives, are known for moving in big flocks and having a history of causing trouble for humans on Skull Island. Back in 1973, during Monarch's expedition to Skull Island, these monsters showed up not once but twice, giving the crew a hard time. They popped up again in 1995 during another hush-hush trip to the island. In 2019, a bunch of them took off from Skull island, flying all the way to Boston. They were answering King Ghidorah's call, but by the time they got there, Godzilla had already finished Ghidorah off. As of 2024, Leaf Wings were still hanging out in a massive dome monarch built for Kong on Skull Island. This dome mimicked the island's original environment, and the Leaf Wings seemed pretty at home there. When Monarch teamed up with Apex Cybernetics for a jaunt into the Hollow Earth, guess what they found? More Leaf Wings thriving in this underground world. In Godzilla, King of the Monsters, right after Godzilla took down King King Ghidorah in Boston, some leaf wings were seen fluttering around the seed. They had just come out of the Hollow Earth, lured by Ghidorah's Global Titan wake-up call. Other big names like Ronan and Queen Muto also showed up, but they all ended up bowing to Godzilla, the new Alpha. Godzilla vs. Kong shows that after Skull Island got swallowed up by a storm, the leaf wings adapted to life in a dome with Kong. They're seen coexisting, albeit a bit uneasily, with a big guy. And in Godzilla x Kong, the new empire, these creatures were spotted doing their thing in the Hollow Earth. Son of Kong, or at least a distant relative? In the trailer, there's one scene that's catching everyone off guard, the appearance of a young Kong. At first glance, you'd think Kong's in for a huge showdown when this massive shadow looms over him, but plot twist, it's actually a much smaller, almost childlike version of Kong. This little guy isn't your typical rampaging monster, he's got this vibe of innocence like a kid just exploring his world. Hayes spots him and aptly nicknames him Mini Kong, which captures the essence of this pint-sized surprise and Monsterverse. What a time to be alive. Oh wait, I got a better one. What a time to be a kaiju fan. Other members of Kong species. In the Monsterverse, it looked like King Kong was the last of his kind for the longest time, but surprise, surprise, it turns out the rest of his species were just around a quarter in that hollow earth all this while. The trailer gives us glimpses of several other Kongs, hinting that Scar King is the big boss around these parts. What's still a bit murky is why Scar King and King Kong end up going toe to toe. The trailer drops a few hints suggesting Scar King might have some unfinished business with a world above, especially humans. But saying any more 
of this would count to some serious speculation, so I'd refrain. And I've already spoken about how the other Kongs might be in the Scar King's army, so that's that. Fox Titan. These are the unidentified canine monsters that can be seen chasing Kong in the trailer. There's little to no information about what these creatures are, but I'm sure that the next trailer will throw some more light on this. These guys do look similar to the Death Jackals, but maybe they are something entirely new like the Scar King. Godzilla. In the MonsterVerse, Godzilla's got a rep as the protector, a label monarch slaps on him along with other titans like Mothra, Kong, Behemoth, and Bethesella. Initially pegged as a threat, Godzilla is now seen as Earth's ultimate garden. He wants to keep a natural balance and check, stepping up to throw down whatever that balance gets wrong. In the first legendary picture, Godzilla, the big G acts like he's the boss of his own turf. Dr. Serizawa thinks Godzilla is like nature's bouncer, stepping in when things get out of whack. Unlike his older movie versions, he's not smashing ships for kicks, he's surprisingly cool and even friendly, ducking under aircraft carriers rather than making waves. Even when the military's on his tail, Godzilla's more focused on hunting the three-headed monsters and the mutos than picking fights with humans. Like that time that he trashed the Golden Gate Bridge, it seemed more like an oops moment than anything malicious. In Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla's still doing his territorial patrols, glowing dorsal fins and all, he teams up with Mothra, communicating through Sonar and pretty much ignores humans for the puny creatures they are unless they're in his way. When the military escorts him to Boston for the big Ghidorah showdown, he's cool with it, like, okay, whatever, another monster to take down, I'll do it. As the top titan, he even herds the other titans away from cities, keeping the human damage to a minimum. Godzilla vs. Kong paints a different picture, though. Godzilla gets a bit rough targeting specific human groups like Apex Cybernetics and a naval fleet that fired on him. Now, that seemed legit, though. You can't piss off a god level giant lizard that breeds what he breeds. According to director Adam Wingard, Godzilla was just messing with Kong in their first few rounds, only getting serious when Kong brought the heat with his axe. After they team up to trash Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla gives Kong and humanity a nod and rolls out conflict over. Kong. In the MonsterVerse, Kong is the big boss of Skull Island, playing Garden to keep the island's natural order ticking. Monarch tags him as a protector just like Godzilla and a few other titans. Kong's got his territory on lock in Kong's Skull Island, but he's more than someone who loves to simply flex muscles. Kong's usually okay with humans only throwing punches when they poke the bear, in a manner of speaking, that is. The Iwi tribe on the island totally digs Kong, seeing him as their big furry savior against the nasty skull crawlers. There's a bit of a connection between Kong and Weaver too, he's cool with her touching his face and even saves her from the Skull Devil, but we know Kong always had a soft spot for beautiful women, especially if they are powerful heroes for Marvel, and the big guy's pretty curious exploring his roots in Godzilla vs. Kong, checking out an ancestral temple and a mean looking battle axe in Hollow Earth. In Godzilla King of the Monsters, the official movie novelization, it's clear Kong's not easily swayed. When King Ghidorah's Alpha Call wakes up Titans worldwide, Kong doesn't budge, choosing to stick to Skull Island. Only Godzilla and Mothra had the guts to stop Ghidorah's call like Kong did, so yeah, Kong's more than just a giant ape, he's Skull Island's heart and soul. And he's not afraid to have a throwdown with anyone messing with his turf. And with the last movie, it became clear that he is the de facto King of Hollow Earth, which also explains that he would not let some orangutan titan take his iron throne. Oh wait, wrong chair. But you know what I mean. We got lots of other exciting stuff in the pipeline about the MonsterVerse, so if you like this one, I suggest you stick around with us. We have such sights to show you. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.